In the previous video, I constructed the conning tower. Now I'm going to move down one level and construct the base of the forward superstructure. The structure that I'm going to be building now straddles the forecastle deck and the shelter deck and forms the base for the entire forward superstructure. In this area of the ship, there are a number of corrections and modifications that need to be made. I'm also installing photo etch in this area. So I'll start by looking at the photo etch components that need to be installed on these parts. Starting with this large platform, these structures at the back of it need to be removed. They're going to be replaced with photo etch. On the bulkhead, there are also a few photo etch modifications that need to be made. These vents need to be cut out and replaced with photo etch. There's a platform that needs to be installed and a door that needs to be installed. However, at this time, I'm only going to install the vents because the other components are going to get in the way of construction, especially when it comes to sanding in the seam line that's going to take place when I install the complete forward superstructure section onto the hull. There are also a few modifications that the HMS Hood Association recommends for this kit. The trumpeter kit provides for Kali floats to be mounted over here and here. This is actually incorrect at the time of the sinking of HMS Hood. So these holes for the mounting of those Kali floats need to be filled and they need to be moved aft to here. Another modification that needs to be made in this area of the ship that I won't be installing in this video is that this bulkhead needs to be extended to this curved section and then wrapped around it. That will come in a later video. In this video I'm going to be focusing on constructing these components and getting them ready for the installation of photo etch in the next video. Photo etch that I will not be installing in this video is the replacing this door. I will however remove it. On these smaller bulkheads that go aft of the structure, there are ladders and doors that need to be removed. However, some of them are inside a cavity and are very concealed. In those cases, I don't see a need to replace those with photo etch. They're literally never going to be seen again. So why bother replacing them? They don't even need to be molded into the kit. However, on these sections, these doors can be removed. They are not in any area where it's going to be a concern to replace them with photo etch and then have that photo etch get in the way of further sanding when I blend in the lines. It's really just these three doors that will be removed during that process. If you're interested to know why I'm building this area of the superstructure in this order or want to have more insight into my thinking, go take a look at video 28 in this build series. That's where I discuss my planning for how I'm going to go about constructing the forward superstructure. In that video, I cut the parts off of the sprue so I could do a dry fitting just to get a better understanding of how these parts go together. So there's no need for me to do that now or these parts are already cut off. However, I didn't clean them in that video or properly prepare them for gluing. So I need to do that quickly. This is simply a case of clipping off the excess plastic and then sanding the edges to make sure that everything is nicely smoothed. When cleaning up these parts, you'll come across a feature that sometimes Trumpeter likes to include that I really don't like. And that is this idea of putting these connection points to the sprue or injection points right on the lines of details. Obviously, this makes it considerably more difficult to remove this excess plastic without damaging the detail. This is usually when I go on a rant about why they have to put the connection points and injection points in these specific locations. Surely they could just put them in another place that's easier to deal with. Why do they have to be there? Anyways, they did it, so now I have to deal with it. This will take some additional filing with a variety of files to try and dig out that excess plastic. Eventually I get into a state that if I'm not happy with, I can live with, so this will just have to be good enough. I will try and fix it up further after I've sprayed this in some Mr. Surfacer just to see how this all looks. But for now, I think this is okay. After cleaning up the parts, I move on to removing the components that are going to be replaced with photo etch. That is essentially this entire back section of this part. I use clippers to clip it up into small pieces that are easy to remove. I don't like to take huge clips off in one go because that can stress the plastic and then cause it to damage parts of the plastic that you want to retain. It's important to do this in such a way that you don't damage plastic that you want to use. After removing the plastic that will be replaced with photo etch, I clean up the edge using a file. Fortunately, this is all taking place in an area of the ship where there isn't a lot of detail, so you don't have to be too careful about trying to preserve detail. Underneath the part, there are also a number of injection points that need to be sorted out. There's a little bit of flashing, and I don't want flashing to get in the way of it sitting on top of the bulkheads. So I just file that down as well. Moving on to the larger bulkheads, the first thing to do is to file off this door. 
this is once again a simple process using a bar file. Here I'm just trying to avoid hitting a wriggle and accidentally taking that off. But there's also not a lot of detail on this part, so it's quite easy to remove the door without causing any damage. Now I need to open up these vents. I'll start by drilling two holes in the vents. Place these holes in opposite corners and then use a craft knife to cut out the plastic vent. Here I made the mistake of treating these two vents as separate vents. I hadn't actually looked at the photo etch at this stage and I figured that there would be two separate pieces of photo etch. But there's actually just one large piece of photo etch that straddles both of these. So I don't actually need to be treating them as a single vent. Later on I come back and cut out that little piece of plastic between the two. So I didn't do anything wrong here in the sense of uh, removing more than I should have. I just made this a little bit more difficult than it needed to be. The same treatment then needed to be given to the other bulkhead. I followed the exact same process. Worked well the last time, so why not do it again? On these smaller components, there is a little bit of flashing. This is also a theme with this kit. This component has the worst flashing by far, but fortunately these are basically rectangles, so they're not difficult to clean up. This curved inner bulkhead was not properly thought out by a trumpeter. The injection points for this part are on the visible portion of it. Fortunately though, this bulkhead goes at the very end of this tunnel into the forward superstructure and it's very unlikely that you'll be able to see it once this model is completed. But it just goes to show that they didn't really think out this area of the ship. If they are putting molded doors and ladders deep down in this tunnel, but then put the injection points on this curved bulkhead on the wrong side, that kind of is a bit of a contradiction. It seems as though they didn't quite think this out. Anyways, after cleaning up the parts, I then remove the hatches and these components are now ready to be glued together. Because I need these components to fit together perfectly with the ship, the first step is to dry place them on the model to ensure that they are in their correct location and will fit nicely. Once in position on the ship, I apply extra thin plastic cement to the top of the joint lines, being careful not to put on too much such that it runs all the way down to the base. At this point, I want the components to stick to each other but not to the ship itself. Remember, it is important that I be able to remove this entire section of the superstructure because I want to continue this construction off the ship. To ensure that these forward bulkheads will fit in correctly with this platform and the conning tower structure above it, while the glue is still wet, I place them on top of the bulkheads to ensure that they dry into the correct position. Once the plastic cement has sufficiently dried so that I can handle the components, I take them off the ship and apply additional extra thin cement to the base of the components to ensure that I have a good strong bond across the entire length of the seam line. Once those components have sufficiently dried, I place them back onto the ship and continue with the construction. In a sense, these smaller components require less precision. They are not nearly as visible as these larger bulkheads that I've already glued together. Many of these components go under the deck itself, so you're not going to really see them. Nevertheless, it is still important that they properly align with this raised molding on the shelter deck. For that, I once again follow the same process as before. This time, there is not a lot of surface area for me to apply extra thin superglue, and I'm very concerned that if I were to use it, it would run all the way down the joint line, hit the shelter deck, and glue the structure to the deck itself. Obviously, that would be counterproductive for what I'm trying to achieve. So in this case, I decided to use Revell Contactor Professional. I apply the glue to the contact area and then gently bring the parts into contact. Revell Contactor Professional dries a lot more slowly than Tamiya Quick Setting Extra Thin Cement. Once all the internal bulkheads are in place, I place this deck platform on top of the structure once again to ensure that everything is level. Since at this point the glue on these parts is very fresh, I need to leave them to dry for about an hour before I'll be confident to handle these parts without causing them to come apart. Since this structure will be immovable for at least the next hour, I reinforce the bonds with further Revell Contactor Professional. After around an hour of drying, I can now handle the structure. The next thing to do is to start preparing to fill these seam lines. I am filling the seam lines with gap filling superglue. I seem to go through phases where I try different types of mediums to fill gaps. Right now I'm going through a bit of a superglue filler phase. I find that superglue filler is very hard and obviously it dries very quickly. So that's quite convenient if you're trying to move quite quickly, although it is more difficult to remove. 
with plastic putty. I find that it dries a bit more slowly, especially if you have to put on quite a lot. And it's also quite soft, so it makes it quite easy to remove, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how strong you need that joint line to be. Then another option is to paint on Mr. Surfacer. Mr. Surfacer, I find when you paint it on and you have quite a thick layer, it dries very, very slowly. But if you're really patient and you do have enough time to just wait for it to fully dry before you try and remove it, it is quite an easy way of filling gaps. It's just that you have to wait a long time for it to dry. Going back to what I'm currently doing, it was at this point that I decided to actually look at the photo edge that I'm going to install. I wanted to make sure that I could correctly cover these holes that I'd opened up. I needed to see if I needed to remove additional plastic or if I needed to close it in a little bit. That was when I discovered that these two small events should be opened up into one large event. I also discovered that I had slightly undercut the sides of these holes, so they needed to be opened up a little bit more. I had aimed to only cut out the molded plastic vent and no additional plastic. Obviously that had to go regardless, but I didn't want to make the hole so big that I then have a problem trying to fit a vent in it or then having to fill that gap up a little bit. Opening up these holes just requires a little bit more filing. There is nothing tricky about that. The next thing to do is to fill the holes for the cardio raft on these forward bulkheads. Once again, I'm using super glue cap filling medium. I just apply a small drop of it into each of these holes. I let it dry and then I file it off and sand it smooth. In this area, I think I made a mistake in using CA glue. It would have been a lot easier if I'd used Tamiya plastic putty. It would have been softer and much easier to sand off. While I'm filling holes, there are also these two holes that need to be filled. There is a boom that is going to be installed over here that actually needs to be moved a little bit lower because in this area is going to be where I install the Cardi float and it will interfere with that boom. Six holes on each side of the ship need to be filled. Don't be like me and use CA glue filler. Make life easier for yourself and use plastic putty. Then there are just various seam lines around this part that need to be filled in. I'm still sticking with CA glue filler. I haven't decided at this point yet to switch to the plastic putty. In either case, it's the same thing really. It's just a matter of making sure you get enough filler onto the gap such that you can completely sand it off and have a smooth finish. Since the plastic platforms are going to be replaced with photo etch platforms, this large hole also needs to be filled. I figured the easy way to fill it would be to use some styrene stock and just stick it into that gap and then file any excess off of the top of it. This is 0.5 millimeter styrene stock and I'm gluing it in place using extra thick super glue. Last set of modifications I'm going to be making in this video are to these openings for the ladders. There's a recessed platform in the deck where the ladder should be connected. This is incorrect. This is because the plastic ladders have a landing section that would be glued into that portion of the deck. My options are to either cut out this opening and make it bigger and then not have that lowered section of decking or I could fill in those lowered platforms. I am opting for the latter option, so I need to find a way of filling in those recesses. I figured the easy way to do that would be to cut the intended landing off of the top of the plastic ladders, which I won't be using anyway, and then glue them into the place where they should be. I can then glue them down with extra thin plastic cement and fill the gaps, which can then be sanded down to create a nice smooth finish. I did a test fit with one ladder and it worked out quite well, so I decided that this was an appropriate way of doing this. So I cut off another two ladders, removed their landing, and glued them onto the deck. Now that everything is stuck down and all the glue and filler has dried, the excess can be removed. Starting with a file, I remove the majority of the excess. I then move on to a 240 grit sanding sponge to smooth out the edges as much as possible and to remove the rather large gashes that the file left in some locations. And then after the 240 grit sandpaper, I move on to a 500 grit sandpaper to create a nice smooth finish. Since there's further work to be done in this area of the ship, I'm not going to finish it with a 1000 grit sandpaper. I'm going to leave it at a 500 grit sandpaper for now. If you're wondering why I put tape on these components while I sand and file them, that is to protect the details. There are wriggles above the portholes in this area of the ship. I don't want to remove them, so the masking tape will protect that. And then 
at the back here, you can see that there's an edge that I'm trying to protect. So in sanding or filing, it's very easy to round off a corner and I want to retain this edge. So by putting tape on it, it's just going to help protect it and prevent me from accidentally removing that corner. So at this point, when trying to remove the excess super glue filler that I realized that I probably should have done this with plastic putty, I think it would have been considerably easier to remove. Regardless, I got it done. I have a tendency to make things more difficult for myself when building these ships. But that's only going to be to your advantage if you're following along with the way I'm building this ship. You don't have to make all the mistakes that I make. Now that the part is glued together, sanded and filled, is ready for the installation of photo etch. In the next video, I'll install the photo etch vents and spray this area with Mr. Surfacer, correct any defects, and then glue the platform onto the bulkheads. If you would like to support this channel or see how this ship looks when it is completed, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Cheers.